We have five stocks that we're going to share with you. I have three. Fat Man Zoom has two. I'm going to go ahead and lead off with my uh, stock, first stock that I'm watching this week, and that is CrowdStrike. CrowdStrike has been a fan favorite. It's been my favorite. It's been absolutely insane the way that this has been moving um, since the start of the pandemic. And this is really, I hate to use the word that it's benefited from the pandemic, but really, when you look at it, it, it kind of has, you know, w- with the way that uh, remote work has, and we were just talking about remote work as far as Zoom is concerned, when we look at the way that remote work has evolved, uh, CrowdStrike just fits perfectly into this. They are c- cybersecurity, but more focused on the cloud and protecting your assets digitally. So if you're a business and you have remote workers, you really need a company like CrowdStrike to come in and make sure that you're protected. Well, CrowdStrike has grown significantly because of the pandemic. They have crushed earnings every quarter all leading up to this one. I have no reason to believe that they don't do that this time around. Their estimated earnings per share is flat, break even at $0 per share. I have them beating coming in at five cents. Last time around, they came in at three cents. And I think that, you know, to some of the points that we were talking about a zoom as far as zoom is concerned remote works here to stay it's not going anywhere it's only going to continue to grow especially with the elevated amount of uh cases that we've seen and yes the vaccine's on its way but it is a long ways off and that still gives businesses even more time to figure out if they want to go ahead and stick with remote work or have everybody move back into the brick and mortar and pay those leases and all that good stuff incur that extra expense. My hunch is, is that there's not going to be too many businesses that want to do that. So then CrowdStrike comes in and uh, does really well as far as that's concerned. Uh, They differ from, like I was saying, from older cybersecurity companies because uh, they don't uh, deploy on-site appliances and that sort of thing. Instead, it's uh, their tools are all cloud-based. Um, they We really need to see revenue growth, which has kind of been a pain point. And it kind of was why they sold off a little bit last quarter because even though they beat earnings, their revenue didn't come in what, they, what uh, investors were expecting. We really need to see some really good retention rate as well as subscriber growth uh, for this thing to keep going. So if they blast those key three metrics plus becoming in and beating earnings, I think that they will actually do pretty well. Now, if we come in here and look at the Webull chart, uh, I think that, uh, let me go ahead and pull that up. Um, yeah, CrowdStrike. CRWD is the ticker symbol. And again, they have earnings after hours on uh, Wednesday. And they are at, they close at 153.83. Now, if they come in and actually beat these earnings, I think, and, and meet those metrics that I think that they, I think that they'll actually meet and beat, we could see a move up over 153.90, which is the all-time high for CrowdStrike. I think we end up seeing this closer to 175 if they come in and beat all the expectations that investors are expecting here. Uh, I like CrowdStrike a lot. Batman Zoom would love to give your brief thoughts on that. Uh, I have them beating four cents a share. Charlie Connor said that Motley Fool likes them, um, and they should definitely beat. Listen, most companies should definitely beat. Yeah, I got to remind you people. Beating doesn't mean the stock goes up. Doesn't matter. We need to see guidance. We need to see what moving forward. So just keep that in mind. Moving on to number two. Number two, I have Costco. And I brought it up because of the special dividends. So the special dividend X date is uh, close of business day, December 2nd. So same day. If you are holding on to Costco when, when the market closes on Wednesday, you will get $10 a share which will show up in your account December December 11th. So um, I wanted to let you guys know this, and I'm not sure if you realize it, because we talk about Costco, and you've mentioned that it's sort of like Steady Eddie. Yeah. Uh, it's one of the stocks that you kind of hold forever. Costco, the thing about Costco is like, I feel like you could, um, I feel like it's something better than Coke. Like, I, I think people put it in like the Coke category, which is, you know, it has growth and you you hold it over time, you hold it forever. This thing does move um, over time. So it's up 30%. I I think that when we get the reopen and the vaccine use, it's going to continue to go up. It benefits either way. It's essentially recession proof. Um, and I just want to give you a few numbers. So it's up 30% this year. Last year, it had 50% growth year before it 10 and then 16%. The last time it had a negative year was 2008, which was the crash. That's crazy. (laughs) And even, you know, and so, I mean, considering that um, this is a stock that is just underappreciated. I know people talk about it 
but it's a monster. Yeah. We have earnings December 10th. The interesting thing is, what does it do after X dividend date? Could it go down? Sure. Um, if it gets to 380, I don't think it gets below that, but if it gets to 380, below 382, I'll buy that. Yeah. Um, so it's a good opportunity to be in. Uh, and they've, you know, this is, they consistently give these special dividends, which show they're trying to give money back to the investors. So I love Costco. Yeah. I love Costco too. I've never, I don't know if I could say enough nice things about it. It end, ended up going to all time highs at $390, 67 cents. Uh, that special dividend is probably going to continue to push this forward. We might see some small selling, uh, after the ex dividend date, but look uh, around the corner, just as you were mentioning for earnings to be coming up as well. I think that this is going to be something that will definitely be worth keeping a close eye on. Costco is you, it's just something that you could hold on to forever and feel comfortable holding on to it forever because it's just going to continue to perform. Uh, but uh, this could definitely be an opportunity to perhaps be in and out of Costco as well, especially if you guys went in on that special $10 dividend, which is unprecedented. A $10 dividend from Costco is pretty impressive. Um, one of the, I think it's the largest, um, a uh, special dividend that I've ever seen from them. So really good stuff from Costco. For me, uh, the next one that I have is Dollar General. They have earnings coming up on uh, Thursday, pre-market. Estimated earnings per share at $1.97. I think they come in at two fifty three. dollars if Dollar Tree was any indication of what we could expect from Dollar General, I think that Dollar General also smacks this out of the park. Last time around, they came in at earnings per share of around $3.12. So I'm even being conservative here, I think, especially even with their uh, estimated earnings per share at $1.97. Uh, I think that my two fifty three is probably conservative. Did you know, Fat Man Zoom, that Dollar, uh, Dollar, Dollar General store pays for itself in under two years? I did not know that. That's incredible. Yeah. The company has already identified 9,000 spots to open yet another store. Uh, and so the fact that they have, and their same store sales continue to go up even during a pandemic. So it pays for itself another two years. They got 9,000 spots they're looking to open new stores at. And they, their same store sales are continue to grow even through probably one of the worst economic contractions that we've ever seen. I love Dollar General, not just for this week. But for years to come, for with those kind of metri metrics, with the health of this company, the way they've been going, this is another one, kind of like in that same vein with your Costco. Uh, this is, you could just buy this thing, and it's not sexy. It's not think, something that's going to blow anybody away, but you could buy into some of, the, some of this, continue to build a position 20, 30 years down the road. This is something you could uh, very well retire off of. Yep, and up 40% year to date. Um, man, my number is insane. So yeah, you could say that yours was potentially conservative. <laughs> yeah. I got to give my number because I got to trust the calculations I make. I have them beating three dollars and seventy four cents. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, yeah, three three seventy four. Three three dollars. Oh my god, that's crazy. It sounds wild. We'll see, but they beat. Now here's something to consider. Dollar Tree crushed it. It's it's gone up 15% since then. Yeah. We were talking about, well, what is Dollar General going to do? It's only been up less. It's, it's less than 3% it's been up. So I think this sort of patterns what happened with Snapchat. Snapchat crushed it. And then we were looking for marketing spend. Yeah. And then they showed it, crushed it, stock blows up. And then every other stock in that industry basically did the same thing they followed the same pattern you would think they would all kind of massively move up but they waited till their earnings and they moved up yeah. so to me i you know there's no sure bets but to me this seems as close to like a no-brainer as anything as far as like beat yeah move in general so i like donald dollar general um, I definitely like it better than Dollar Tree if I had to pick one, but yeah. both of them you can't go wrong with. Me too. And and I think that when this came down from going to 225.25 and this came down and sold off to 205, that was going to be the absolute best opportunity that you have had at Dollar Tree. I still think that there could be opportunities for this. 
how to play this through earnings. I think that if you're not in Dollar General, maybe wait till after earnings come out just for the just in case. But if you are feeling a lucky here, and I do use that term literally because we have no idea what's going to be happening after earnings. We're only going to be making our best guesses. Most of the time we're right. But, um, you know, I think with Dollar General, especially with any earnings, you go into this with the understanding that if you try to buy this to just to play earnings, you are taking some pretty inherent risks. So I think at this point, especially with the move that it's made all the way up to 218, it might make some sense to just kind of hold off and wait till after earnings come out. But if you want to get in earlier before that, let's see if there's a pullback. You see something down around 215 and especially down the low 200s would for sure be grabbing some up, even if it's before earnings, because we both think that they're going to do really well, probably goes up from there. Anything down in the low 200s will be a solid grab for Dollar General. What you got coming up next? So number four, I have Callaway. People, Callaway. <laughs> Good old Callaway. Bring it back. Simple E-L-Y. Um, I wanted to bring this back because we, you know, we had got into it after earnings. It had dipped down. Um, and and we got into it. And we we just kind of made this fun play. But that was like just a technical look. Yeah. And we liked the top golf acquisition. Um, it wasn't even acquisition. They had a, they already had 14% stake, but basically they bought the rest of Top Golf. Uh, and we liked it, so we got into it. Now, looking deeper into it, thinking about what they're going to be doing moving forward, I've talked about Drive Shack. Drive Shack was one of the stocks that we had that had high upside. Callaway, I think, is just as good of a play, if not better of a play. Um, so, to me, they crushed earnings three weeks ago. Prospects are looking up. Golf in general, everybody in their sister is like playing golf right now is yeah. wanting to learn golf. And the good thing about what Callaway has done, and I don't know if people can appreciate this or even realize this is they're targeting the right people. Callaway. Um, well, let me back up golf in general has kind of this like historical vibe that baseball has where it's kind of like traditionalist. You have to like, be all in or all out and it's kind of snooty yeah so a lot of golf companies are only targeting people that are really really serious about golf if you're not they don't want anything to do with you that's a mistake callaway it's clear that they're they're getting to people that are just in it for recreation and that's where the opportunity is at they're a great brand they're great for people who want to take it seriously but the money is where people are actually like they just want to do it for fitness for exercise for just an activity outdoors with the pandemic. And we said it with drive shot top golf is the leader in this space where top golf, when things come back, they're positioned to benefit off of social distancing. So they're going to be the first ones that are going to see, um, I think the bump in hospitality. So yeah. I think Cal Callaway is doing everything right. They have an endorsement with Steph Curry that shows again, that they're looking for the casual player. Um, and so I expect more ambassadors like Steph Curry. I expect them to dig deeper into that space. And their CEO said they want to be the Peloton for golf. Now, basically what this means is they're going to start connecting with their consumer with the ball tracking. We're like, they're going to look at the fitness side of things. And I think it's smart. I think they're looking at things different than other companies. Yep. And I think in a couple of years, we're going to turn around and Callaway is just going to be ahead of everybody else. And they're going to be chasing. Yeah, I agree with you a hundred percent. And especially with, uh, as we transition to getting things to back, back to quote unquote normal, um, you know, the, the fact that, investors felt as if buying uh top golf was too expensive and that it was going to uh, bring Callaway down was just absolutely insane. And if you guys are looking at the chart here, that's, that's what happened here. Once this, the, uh, they acquired the rest of top golf, we saw this huge selling off and that's when we saw this as a really good opportunity. Uh, we played this through the earnings run up. Guess we probably should have held through that, but we think that there's going to be other opportunities for this. If we see a break uh, up above that $21 range, we could see Callaway continue here. I have every reason to believe that they do as well. It's a really good solid one, Fat Man Zoom, to bring to everybody's attention, even though it was one of those ones that we kind of half-heartedly got into. Uh, the more we dug into this, we we're like, man, this makes a ton of sense to just hold on to this. It's nice and cheap. We think that I think that we could see this at 30 bucks a share by April. I don't know about you, but I think that could definitely be a possibility. And that would be mean a 30% move for Callaway. Um, 
for me, the next one, the last one for uh, this week that we have watching, and we're going to talk about a couple other ones because I have a, some runners up. I got one special bonus one, if you will, that I think is worth watching too. Uh, but this one is going to be DocuSign to round out number five here. DocuSign closed at 226.87 on a little bit of a run up since it sold off uh, with uh, you know positive vaccine news and that sort of thing. Another one of those remote work plays, but again, another opportunity for me as far as I'm concerned for remote work. Um, I think they crushed this quarter's earnings. Their estimated earnings per share at 13%. They come out with those earnings on Thursday after hours. Uh, my estimation is going to be around 20 cents per share. Uh, I think that DocuSign is the way that we're going to do business from now on. Uh, if you guys still use a fax machine, you're not going to be using one for too much longer. If you use any of those other scanning uh, type of uh apparatuses, whatever you want to call them, that are now obsolete. This is the way that everybody's going to be going to, do, to sign documents. You're probably not going to be signing paper contracts for too much longer if that's something that you're still into. DocuSign is going to is here. It's here to stay. It's only going to continue to accelerate from here, in my opinion. Uh, the company had around 749,000 customers as of the second quarter of its fiscal year. Uh, and uh, DocuSign is a software as a service company. If you guys don't know, subscription uh, packages to its clients. Um, and so... I think that we could see revenue climb maybe even a 95% compared to last year. And so this is going to be a really strong quarter for DocuSign. They ended up running up as high as 290 per share on their last earnings. And so if they beat earnings, then they beat these expectations, especially when it comes to revenue and subscriptions. I think that DocuSign could make a run as high as 250. Not really, not ready to pull the trigger on that 290 uh, spot yet. But if they end up blowing everybody out of the water, that's certainly on the table. And when this happened, went all the way up to 290. This was at the height before uh, September rolled around. If you guys recall, there's a pretty strong correction in September. So earnings came around. The correction happened that literally the day after. And so DocuSign came down. I think that um, this is just a really solid opportunity for DocuSign. We should see this run uh, uh, pretty close to that $300 range. Maybe not by the end of the year, but towards that first half of the year, I think we could see DocuSign make another move towards 300 bucks, And we could see that start. Uh, this week with this quarter's earnings. Yeah, I got them beating uh, the Michael Jordan special 23 cents a share <laughs> uh, for sake of time. That's all I'll say. I agree with everything you're saying. All righty. Well, uh, that is our top five stocks for this week. If you guys... Um, I just wanted to throw one special runner up or honorable mention, and that's Alta. Alta is, I think, going to crush earnings as well. It's already done extremely well uh, leading up to this week. So make sure that that one's on your radar as well. It's at 281. I think we see all time highs this week on Alta. Uh, and that is going to do for our top five stocks for this week. If you guys are interested in uh, getting a list like this every single day, make sure they hit the join button next to subscribe, become part of the chaos crew. We certainly would be happy to have you guys over there. Fat Man Zooms, you got anything else? No, just keep liking and subscribing. Get the <laughs> notifications. That's right, guys. <laughs>